In today's video, I'm going to be expanding upon a concept that I broke down in yesterday's uh, YouTube video, which is the cover eight coverage or the cover nine coverage in Madden and how you can actually utilize this coverage to shut down some of the best offenses in this game. Today, we're going to be looking at how this coverage applies to gun bunch, some of the rules and principles that you can utilize when defending the gun bunch. And if you're new to the channel, I want to ask you to subscribe. We've got a ton of content here on the channel. I upload multiple videos a day that can kind of break down the game, help you get better, understand what zones do what, what man coverage do what, what routes do what, kind of learning about the game, trying to become better every single day. And I actually, today we're talking about the nickel 245 out of the Baltimore Ravens defensive playbook. And I've got a full 245 odd, or 245 odd as well as a 245 uh, normal uh, defensive guide in my Patreon membership. If you want to get the Patreon membership, it's only $10 a month. And the cool part about that is by joining the Patreon membership, you're going to not only get access to the 245 ebook, but you're going to get access to, I think I actually have 17 or 18 offensive and defensive guides in the Patreon membership right now um, that really dive deep into this game. We break down different formations, different offenses on defense or different defenses, as well as different concepts that cross apply to multiple formations. So we typically update those guides as well. Um, pretty much every single week, there's some kind of new update coming out, maybe a couple different videos that either explain a new concept or uh, an update to a current ebook that may, be, that may need it. We also, um, by joining the, the Patreon, you're going to get access to any new ebooks as well. And we typically release an ebook at least once every month, if not once every two to three weeks. So if you want to sign up for the Patreon, really, really great deal. You, it's, got a, it's got everything in there. You can kind of pick and choose what you want to learn, what you don't. Um, and it's only 10 bucks a month and it unlocks everything. Cool part about it too is you can cancel whenever you'd like to. Um, so if you just want it for a month, that's fine. If you want it for you know six or 10 months, that's fine as well. But if you, as soon as you pay for it, you get everything. You get access to all the content. So uh, anyways, let's take a look here at this cover nine or the cover eight coverage. And I wanted to set some audibles real quick from Bunch. Uh, the biggest thing is I just wanted to show you this uh, concept. We're going to talk through dig return a little bit, verts, Z, spot and go. And then let me see if I can find one more. Smash return probably would be a good one to start with. And then we'll come out in... Oh, we'll just come out in, let's see, we could come out in flood, or we could come out in curl flat. Um, you know what, for sake of ease, let's just come out in uh, flood here. And again, the coverage is the cover nine. Um, now, Fangio calls this the cover eight. Most terminology is the cover eight. Um, and the reason why is because it's it's just, I mean, again, it's, it's called um, half quarter quarter. Okay, half quarter quarter, whereas cover six is known as quarter quarter half uh, in terms of the way the coverage is going to play out. So cover six here, you see here, um, the nickel corner is in that purple zone, and then you've got a quarter quarter half. That's cover six, okay? And then cover nine is just basically the flipped version of that. Um, if I can find it here, let's see here, on the, on the nickel uh, 245. Do they not have cover nine in this playbook? Pretty sure they do. I'm in the Ravens. Here we go. Cover nine show two. I'm in the Ravens playbook. Ravens defensive playbook. But again, you can find this coverage in multiple things. So notice that this is half, quarter, quarter, and then you have that. Now, why would you call cover nine? Well, to be honest with you, this coverage is best for crossing routes that are going to come from the trips to the other side of the field. So, for example... If I go to verticals, what you'll see is that this quarter on the left will do a pretty decent job at hanging with that crosser. It really does have to be a perfect throw. Um, so if I run, you know, Z or um, verts, that inside quarter on the left is going to guard him pretty well across the formation. I'm getting crazy sheds out of two four five. Two four five does have. I would argue. Um, 245 probably has the best sheds in the game. At least it's up there with, I mean, it's it's one of the better ones. But anyways, let me just spy this so I can show you this route. So if I throw this crossing route, like if I'm watching it, and this is the only thing I'm throwing, I'm going to try to throw it right there. And you see, I mean, it's a bang-bang play. It really is. And the better coverage you have on that player, the better it's going to be. If you have deep in or deep out zone KO, uh, deep out zone KO, he's going to get a speed burst on that as well. So that's just something that I wanted to kind of hit on first. 
That's the reasoning as to why you call it. However, one of the problems with this coverage is that if they want to flood the bunch side, this coverage in, in Madden doesn't work quite as well as it does in real life. And what you're going to notice is that they can hit your corner to the back side here. And again, you see Chubb just going nuts with no abilities or anything. But let me show you again. So if they, if they want to flood the bunch side vertically with something like this, this is where the big problem lies. And that they can throw that, and it's wide open. Okay, so how do you defend this? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you think. And then also flood. Now, this what this is good against is flood. If they if they run flood, typically they're going to be decent against you. Okay, you're going to have decent coverage on flood. Um, let me think of a couple other route combinations here real quick. Uh, dig return. Dig return. A popular match beater is dig return. They just streak this slot right here. What you'll notice is this won't beat this coverage. As you can see right there, R1's not open. However, if I was in um, if I was in cover six, which I'll show you cover six real quick, what you'll notice is if I go to dig return, this guy is gonna be wide open up the seam. Okay? So you see how cover nine has some answers for some problems that are already existing in match whenever you defend bunch. Another one that I wanted to hit on real, 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 real briefly here is uh, Smash Return. So Smash Return, one of the better cover three bombs in the game. Um, this is kind of how you set it up, and then you can do whatever with the running back if you want to out route him, if you want to, uh, I mean, whatever you want to do. But what you'll see here is this tight end on the right side. You'll notice that this tight end, he will get over the top of that soft squat. Now, if you had a cloud there, he might not. But for the most part, he gets over the top of that soft squat. And then the other thing I wanted to show you out of Smash Return is the skinny post uh, over here on the back side of this. So again, let me just get these guys out of the way. And I want you to watch the skinny post. He's going to get isolated. He actually plays, we actually play the skinny post okay. The slant is open, but of course the corner route is too. Okay. So those are some of your major, I mean, your main heavy hitting concepts out of bunch. One last one would be something like this. Um, and what you'll see from something like this is that this corner will, same kind of thing, he just kind of gets over that soft squat. Really, the soft squat doesn't do much for us. Um, last concept is verticals to the wheel to the tight end. If you watch this wheel to the tight end, what you'll notice is that this vert hook does a really good job at defending that, as you can see. The one thing I will say about verticals, though, and if we look very closely at this, if we get time, this circle receiver right here should be open for a touch uh, a touchdown. As you can see right there, he's wide open on the sideline. So how do we adjust this coverage to make it effective? Well, what we do is actually really easy. We're just simply going to take this guy right here. I like to press it. Um, we're we're going to turn this into quarter, quarter, half, or um, we're going to turn this into quarter, half, quarter, quarter. Because we know that this principle of the coverage is going to make this left side guy play significantly better on crossing routes. With match coverage, whenever you start changing things, as long as they have matching principles built within them, it actually can still play like match coverage. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take Sertan and just simply put him into a outside quarter. Now, what you can do with Callahan is honestly up to you. It depends on what you want to have to use her, to be honest. Um, it really depends on what you want to have to use her. Um, I would recommend, I would recommend taking this guy and playing a little chess. Sometimes he's on a vert hook. Sometimes he's in a curl flat. Like that's how I would do it. Um, the reason why is because what we can do also is we can simply take this guy, put him in a curl flat, and then remember we can drop uh, guys into coverage. So we could drop. For example, you know, we, we could use her this guy, which is the most likely guy to use her. And then we could go ahead and drop a, you know, bluff blitz assignment there. And then we could drop, you know, this guy into a vert hook or, or we could flip that. So we could drop the vert hook there and then we could drop this guy into a vert hook. So you see, this is what the, the play would look like if we did it like this. So you still have your vert hook. 
But really the key and what I want to show is if they try to throw a corner route to R1, what you're going to notice here is when we make those adjustments, all of a sudden that corner route gets matched perfectly by that outside quarter. To me, that is a huge deal because if you think about it, not only are we getting, most people when they defend bunch and match, they put a deep path there anyway, but they, they lose significantly effective, more effective match principles from that backside safety on crossers when they do that. So if you were in cover six, for example, let's say you're in cover six and you're going like this and that's your coverage, right? This guy's in a purple. When they run verticals, like good Lord, watch how much more separation this guy's gonna get. Absolutely more separation on that crosser, okay? He gets a ton more separation on the crosser, um, more than likely, especially if you're in quarters. If it's a stock quarter, he's definitely gonna get more separation. Okay, um, I hot routed it right there, which did help it a little bit. But anyways, that's kind of the, the gist of it. So when you go to something like this, now all of a sudden they um, they're going to struggle against this. Okay, so let's say they run this concept. Well, what you're going to notice is this corner right to the tight end completely bagged up. And then also what I want to show you is an re instant replay. An instant replay. If you take a quick look here, watch the slant. You're gonna notice the slant gets matched across the formation. And now we're playing a lot better coverage than we were originally on this concept. Okay, so that's an easy way to do this. Now again, what you can, you can actually do whatever you really want with these underneath guys. It's actually a much safer way to play match because this deep half has matching principles built within it. That's the thing that most people don't understand. Whenever you put a deep half out of quarters, palms, or cover six to that to that trip side quarter, he's not going to have matching principles. And so therefore, if they throw a seam streak or something, they're going to have a pretty good chance at beating you. However, when you do it out of cover nine, he has matching principles. So watch this streak to R1. See how he turns inside, drives on the route, and is able to actually make a play on it. This is also going to help significantly when we talk about defending the stock fade route out of this now last thing that i wanted to just try to hit on real quick before we take off is flood now how do we defend flood well if you look here you're going to notice the flat is open but i want you to watch something real quick what we can do is a very simple adjustment and this is where i talk about the chess match if they're likely to run verts i would go ahead and leave this guy in a vertical hook if they're likely to run flood you want to put him in a curl flat and then you want to pass commit. So you see that's kind of how we did it. And now if they try to run flood, your quarter is going to play really well. Your curl flat is going to play really well. And they have to take their underneath route, which is what exactly what we want. One other little piece uh, or little nugget for you is when you're defending bunch. And this is something that I've started doing personally. When you're defending bunch, bunch is such a monster to defend. It's, it's by far one of the glitchiest formations year in and year out. It's been the number one offense ran in Madden since Madden 17. Uh, so for the last five years, and I think it was still very popular before then. The reason I'm saying that is because the biggest, one of the biggest challenges when defending bunch is this running back. This running back on a wheel, this running back on an out, this running back on really anything. Um, so what I wanna show you is, and I've talked about this principle before, but let's say that we actually take this guy out of the play. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the nose tackle on the bunch side and put him in a, bl uh, a bluff blitz assignment. What you'll see is he'll actually just jet out and guard the running back pretty well. Honestly, pretty well. And in Mutt, you're going to have a lot faster of a guy. They're going to have a Randy Gregory there. You're going to have a, uh, maybe a Micah Parsons if you have certain situational adjustments. You can do the same thing with the defensive end. So this is another reason. It's going to give you an addition, additional advantage on the side. So now you can either user this guy or you can purple him, purple him. Now you have a match coverage that is built, that is absolutely built to be able to handle if that running back goes on a wheel. And that's what's really key about this is it's able to kind of handle some of the more popular things that people are going to do with the running back. And then you've also got great coverage across the board. So this is one of my favorite new defenses um, to run. 
Now I want to just kind of briefly hit on one last point, and that is something that I'm doing out of Nickel Triple. I do have a Nickel Triple ebook in our Patreon membership. If you want to get access to it, again, there's a link to sign up for the Patreon in the description. What you can do with cover, so the Nickel Triple doesn't have cover nine, but it does have cover six. What you can do with this is if you just simply flip this play, you see that my nickel corner is going to actually stay over here. It's one of the major advantages to running nickel triple and the fact that this nickel corner, it, it can flip very easily. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to still put that outside quarter over there. And now we basically are going to use this guy on that, which I just showed you why we can afford to do that. And then we're also going to bluff blitz right there. So now we've got the three wreck that we know is going to take that running back in man coverage. If the running back goes to the flat, we've got a three wreck over here and then we've got a purple. And really what we're receiving is we're going to receive slants, posts, crossers, and kind of help on those routes really is what we're kind of looking to do with this concept here. And what you're going to notice is it's basically create, recreated a cover nine coverage, which is really, really cool out of the nickel triple. So it's a way that nickel triple can really adapt to the formation by just simply flipping it. Again, just flip it here. And then, like I said, if you want to, what you can also do with this, I really like the pressure I get from those edge rushers. So my favorite thing is just to bluff blitz this guy right here. And then from there, if I want to keep this vertical hook, which I certainly can do that, if I want to keep this vertical hook, then I'll take this guy and we'll just throw him into a curl flat. And what you'll notice is against something like Flood, he typically does decent uh, at getting out there if he's a safety. If he's a linebacker, he's not as good, um, and you definitely want to pass commit for that. And then the last thing I want to show about this, just to kind of prove my, my final point here for you, is again, we're just going to flip it. We're going to outside quarter that guy, and then we're going to drop this guy into a curl flat. So you see this is what the coverage looks like. The cool part is you still have that middle linebacker over there for any kind of shallow crossers. He's going to help a lot. You've got man coverage on this back that you can kind of work here. And then you notice that the outside quarter does a really good job at defending the corner route. So, you know, this is a new way to run match, something that I've, I've slept on most of the year. I'm sure that you have as well. Um, it's just something different. And I think if you start kind of messing around with this, you're going to have some fun. You're going to find that it's a pretty decent little coverage. Um, I really do. Um, one of the most popular things that people are going to do from bunch is you're going to get a lot of skinny posts uh, to the back side, especially um, if you run a lot of match coverage. What's really interesting about this in particular way to run it, when you run half or quarter, half, quarter, quarter, specifically out of a cover six or cover nine look, what you're going to notice is that this uh, post is going to get double teamed up the seam. We see there's really not a window to throw the post over the top. And that's huge because that's where most, if you think about bombs on a bunch, they're really centered around really two concepts, either a post from this receiver and then a streak and then maybe something like a little post corner, you know, something like this or a post to the other receiver. Well, what's really interesting about this coverage in particular is that this specific coverage does a really, really, really good job at being able to handle these posts over the top. So again, here you see he's getting double teamed and matched all the way across. Right there, Scotty Miller's speed is just a little bit higher than Simmons, but you see that he's, again, following the path of the route, which is so important uh, on defense. So this isn't necessary. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I've tested against every bomb in the game, but pretty much any bomb that I have tested it against any of the popular concepts this does a really good job at defending it. So this is cover nine and how it works against bunch. Again, Fangio calls this cover eight or um, half, quarter, quarter. And then we just kind of modified it by putting that other additional quarter over there. The reason why is just because that soft squad is supposed to carry a little bit more than it does. And uh, this is going to help significantly. So I want to thank you for watching the video. If you're still watching and you really want to learn more about match defense and all this stuff, I've got a ton of breakdowns in our Patreon covering all this um, in a little bit more detail than I did in this video that really walks you through how to do this. And so if you want to learn how to do that, there's a link in the description where you can join our Patreon membership. It's only $10 a month and it unlocks everything. You get access to all the eBooks, 
all the updates to the ebooks and any new ebooks that I will release over the course of the time that your subscription is active. We release updates pretty much every week as well. So thanks for watching. If you want to sign up for the Patreon, head on down to the description of the video. Click the link that I put down there and you can go check it out.